Hello and welcome to this <coughs> third edition of History of Government and Politics. Question and answer. You ask the questions, I'll try to give a good answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll say I don't know. Try to find out. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I was supposed to do something later today, but that got canceled. Still not sure quite why, but let's see if I find out. Um, I have natural ice, 5.9% to drink. Third beer of the day, day off of work. Drink one more later. That's it. I'm not gonna go crazy. I had some fanciest, excuse me, fancier stuff earlier, but now I'm just drinking simple, stand, what I call standby beers. Standby beers. Okay. Um, I don't know about awesome, but it's enjoyable at least. Current events, there was a pretty significant bombing attack on American Marines at the airport in Kabul, capital of Afghanistan, a little while ago. And uh, these 12 Americans were killed, 11 Marines and one Navy corpsman. This morning I was making my bed and I was thinking, well, at least it hasn't really been too violent for the so it hasn't really been violent violent for soldiers yet. And maybe everybody can get back, pull out, get get them out safely. But that's turning out bad. Now, at this point, has the potential to get a lot worse. Um, the Taliban government, the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. They seem to be a pretty disorganized government. They don't also appear to have complete control of the situation over there. So, um, you know what I mean? Like they say, we're the government, but I don't know how much they're governing. But anyway, be that as it may, they are claiming that somebody else did it. I say, we didn't do it. It was probably some other terrorist group some terrorist group because they claim they're not terrorists. We're not terrorists. But um, I was watching Fox. I had watched CNN for about four years. Just I said, I'm going to watch it for four years. It was pretty comical to watch. But uh, Fox is interesting. I've been watching them for four years also. So I watched... Um, seen in from like 2013 to 2017 and then fox since but they're all their people are <laughs> they're saying um well they've been saying that the whole time we want to get troops back in so they're like war hawks you know they want to get back in get, get, get back in it which is not exactly a surprise from that network and i don't know what they're saying on cnn because i don't watch it like i say i watched it for four years and it was pretty comical, but um, I never did watch it. Uh, Marxist socialism, communist. What is it? Marxist socialist, nihilist, whatever. MSNBC. But uh, I never did watch them. But um, a few times. They used to have Pat Buchanan on there years ago, and they, they fired him. He was too conservative. He was like their house conservative. They were like, you're not supposed to be real. You're not supposed to be actually conservative. So that was kind of funny. He said, oh, well, I don't care if you fire me. I'm not going to come on here and dance to your dance to your tune. Um, but, you know, Fox has their establishment people. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll let them say certain things. But they're not going to let them say uh, too much. All right. Um, or they might not be on there. Even Car Tucker Carlson, who's like the show's, the, the, the channel network. It's not really a network. The channel, they're, uh, I guess you call it their right wing commentator. He's very careful in what he says. So he's he doesn't say 
everything he ought to say. I don't say everything I ought to say because, well, if you can't appear, then you can't communicate. <laughs> so um, people sometimes will be will be careful and um, use um, terms that are implicit instead of explicit. I even made a video about that years ago about how I uh, talked about the history of using explicit versus implicit terms to explain conspiratorial activity. Hey, <laughs> hey, Mr. Terry. Hello, Ronnie S. Graveyard of Empires, you know. So what they say, that's what, what's the topic of the day? Well, the topic of the day is question and answer. So the, the topic is whatever question you ask, I'll try to answer it. Hey, Jordy of Scotland. I was just talking about the, the Afghanistan situation, but um, it's kind of like the never ending story, you know, but uh, whatever people want to ask, if they don't have any questions, then there won't be any answers. <laughs> And anyway, I did a whole video on Afghanistan called Afghanistan, Afghanistan Skedaddle, which I thought was a very interesting video. It was to me. You might have thought it was terrible. But anyway, that's it. Question and answer. You got the question. I'll try to get the answer. History, government, politics. Some people like religious questions. Well, that's OK. It's not really what this show is about. I'm not afraid to answer them. Not, I'm not a theologist, though, so. I have no expertise. I did teach religion class for over five years, but and I, that was on a high school level. You know, why, why do you? OK, here's the first question. Why do you think Biden decided to pull the Afghanistan plug? Any ulterior motives? Um. Not that I could see. Even Trump was saying he supported Biden's plan to, even though him and Trump are, you know, enemies. But he, he, uh, Trump said he supported that. To get out, just get out, you know. But um, Trump was going to do the same thing, get out of Afghanistan by September. But um, people are criticizing Biden. And they say Trump would have done it a lot better. Well, he probably perhaps would have. Um, but it's hard to say what would have been better. And it's hard to say uh, what would have worked. You know, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, well, what they needed to do was all these things. But then there's no way to say that that's correct because you haven't implemented it. You're just saying it, you know. So, uh why do I think he decided to pull the plug? Just because he believed that they should get out. Even a broken clock is twice is correct twice in a day. So do I agree with anything that Ob that Biden, that's a good word. Do I agree with any policies that Biden has personally? Not any policies. If you named every thing that Joe Biden supports, I pr there probably wouldn't be one thing I would agree with. But um if he truly supports getting in Afghanistan, well, okay, then there's one thing we agree on, believe it or not. <laughs> do you, Joe Biden's denture says, do you see any parallels? Bill James, oh, Biden, yeah. <laughs> do you, okay, wait, I got too many questions coming. Let me try to answer them one more time. Do you see any parallels between the American and Russian experience in Afghanistan? The Soviet Union collapsed soon after their withdrawal. Well, there's some parallels. The Soviet Union was in a big collapse situation. Really, be, they were starting to collapse before Afghanistan, their Afghanistan adventure in 1979, December 79. Because the Soviet Union, remember, had a lot of economic problems with their socialist system. So stores with no food, you say, wait, that sounds like, here. okay, well, I'm not saying we don't have socialist leaders who have a Soviet mentality. They do. Look at a lot of these cities, San Francisco, New Orleans, New York City, states like Wisconsin, New York, Oregon, 
Oregon, Washington, and all. they have leaders that have a think thinking or mindset that's not really that different from Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, you know, so they tyrannical and all of that. And they, they have a um, incompetent approach to economic um, principles. So the Soviets had this socialist approach to economics and it collapsed their country. So they were already going down, you see, by 1979, four years after Vietnam. Now, the Vietnam War uh, cost them a lot of money, which they never really could recover from. <coughs> it didn't really benefit them. You know, that it makes me think of France all the time. France helped the United States of America fight Great Britain. Well, what was that going to do for France? Well, it wasn't going to do anything for France. It's just that was their way of getting revenge for their defeat in eight in 1763. So, but there's one little problem. Okay, the United States and France and the Netherlands and Spain, those other two, made the British give up America and they called the war off. Although the British were whipping France in the West Indies and in India, but it was a, a tie around the world, but it was a, a defeat for England and uh, Great Britain in the US in America. All right. But France got so saddled with debt from that war that six years later, their government began to be overthrown by socialist communist radicals who actually succeeded, succeeded in overthrowing their government. And uh, they have that socialist revolutionary government up till today. France still has a socialist revolutionary government up till today. But... Um, they had it from 1789, well, starting in 1789, up until 1815, 1415. And then again, after 18, well, 1848 in, in various forms. Now, uh, so the Soviet Union helped North Vietnam get the United States out. Well, it took a long time, you know, 15 years, but uh, over 15 years. So the U.S. left. It was like a big embarrassment, all that, and controversy. But then the Soviet Union took on so much debt and uh, it wiped out their economy, which was terrible anyway. So what did it benefit them? And then they got involved in Afghanistan, which hurt them even more. And another parallel, you asked about a parallel, when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, the United States chose to get involved. The United States was in this war of choice called the Cold War, which started in 1944 and continues till today, right? Uh, so then the United States started helping the Muslim rebels against the Soviet and Afghanistan allies, Afghan allies. Then when the Soviets left, they had that big, you know, turmoil that lasted from 89 to 96. And then the Taliban started taking over. Well, Russia and other elements started to help this Northern Alliance. The U.S. was involved. Then when the United States got involved by invading Afghanistan in 2001, you had rebels. Now, where did the Taliban get the weapons? Was there like a big Taliban weapons factory? You know, think about that for a minute. Was there a huge, would they have like Taliban weapon industries somewhere in Afghanistan with this huge complex? You know the answer, no. So who was given at the, the Taliban the weapons? I don't know. I haven't researched it, but I have, I have, I bet you I can make some pretty good guesses. All right. So now if everybody would stay out of it, I mean, Russia, China, the USA, the European so-called allies, well, maybe it would all calm down, but they, they can't do that. They, they're too imperialistic, you know, um, let's see. Any questions? A lot. So let's try to, I'll try to. So that's the parallels. I don't think the USA is going to collapse. Now, secondly, remember the Soviet Union had a lot of ethnic problems. You had white Russians. I mean, you know, not Belarus. I mean, 
Russians, white Caucasians, and Belarusians, Belarusians, controlling all the other ethnic groups. Even the other white ethnic groups didn't want to be controlled by them. I'm talking about the Latvians, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Ukrainians, uh, and all of them. They, they said, we didn't want the Russians over here in the first place because they had been under the Russian empire up until 1918. Then you had the uh, Asiatic peoples that never wanted the Russians taking them over. We're talking about the uh, Azerbaijanis. Oh, I forgot about the Georgians. The Georgians and the Armenians, two white uh, tribes of people. But you also had the Asians, Azerbaijanis, which is similar to Iranians. You had, uh, well, they're Asian, but they're Caucasian also. That's what Iran means, land of Aryans, white people land. <laughs> but uh, but the Azerbaijanis, the Turkmenistanis, the Uzbekis, the Tajiks, and so forth. They So we didn't ever ask these Russians to come take us over. So they had a lot of ethnic problems. It wasn't just class warfare and socialism and all. It was ethnic problems. So they collapsed. And then Russia today, the Russian Federation still controls lots of uh, non-Russian ethnic groups that don't necessarily want to be part of that. Now, do we have ethnic problems here? You know the answer to that. Are they going to get worse? I'm not a prophet. I don't predict the future, but you can follow the. the it seems that way because you got you got uh, you know what I mean. Um, agitators, racial ethnic agitators. They always have those people. They make money off of it some kind of way. Or they're just evil. They like to do evil things. Some people like to do evil things, you know, and stirring up racial trouble is like kind of like their hobby. Okay. Why do you think the only time the corporate media criticized Biden is when he decides to end a war? It's a good question. Well, maybe the corporate media supports these foreign conflicts. They were all gung-ho for Vietnam in 1964 and 65. Then suddenly they were gung-not-ho. The corporate media was gung-ho for Korea. They were gung-ho for the Gulf War in 1991. They were gung-ho for the invasion of Af Afghanistan in 2001. They were gung-ho for going into World War II, trying to trump that up, you know, get involved in that. They were gung-ho for World War I. They were gung-ho for attacking Spain. So apparently they, there's some kind of interest that they have in that. <laughs> That's a good name for him, right? Okay. Aaron Chan, the Graveyard Empires, adds another empire to its list. Well, yeah. I said that 20 years ago was going to turn into a fiasco. I, I mean, it was a fiasco. It was going to end in a fiasco. People say, oh, well, actually, no one cared what I said 20 years ago. They didn't pay any mind to what I said. <laughs> Is there anybody currently you are influenced by regarding politics as only matters near elections? Oh, yeah, of course. Lou Rockwell, uh, Ron Paul. Uh, a lot of the Austrian school economic uh, fellows, uh, a lot of anti-war people of various groups. So yeah, uh, uh, sure, many of them. Just look at Lou Rockwell and you see a lot of the people that influence me. Pat Buchanan be a good, good. he's always been a good uh, paleo-conservative, uh, more or less, more or less, but where in America would you recommend I stay for a holiday? Uh, that's not a history, political, or, ge well, I guess it's a geography question. Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say. There's not too many safe cities, I guess. Maybe Salt Lake City, but it might be kind of boring. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, Jordy. I, that's, a, that's a question I cannot answer. Do I still teach for a living? No. I retired nine years ago. The French helping us got them Napoleon, right? So see, they didn't, there was no benefit. There was like nothing, there was nothing good that came out of France helping the Americans in the revolution for them. It was like, a one-sided benefit. The American rebels got their independence and the French got a bunch of debt and lost some of their empire in Asia and their government collapsed. 
I mean, I'm not going to say that their government was well run. They seem to have no clue how to run an economy. You know, they only knew about raising. They were kind of like the United States. They only knew about spending money, spend, 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 spend. And they want to raise taxes all the time. The French, I'm talking about the Bourbons, the old government. It never occurred to them, like, maybe we could cut spending, you know. It's like the United States. France and the United States are similar parallels because it never occurred to them that, hey, maybe if we spend less money, we won't need as much money. But they're, they don't ever think like that. I should be I should be the president of the United States. I've told you all that already. Would I be better than the president we have now? Or the guy who claims he's president now? You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, Or the one before. Or the one before. Or the one before. Or George Bush. Or Reagan. Or Carter. Or Ford, all of them. Well, yeah, I'd be way better than any of those guys. You know that. Y'all know I'd be better than those guys. Because I got more sense than them. The U.S. being mired in the Middle East was originally Jimmy Carter's fault, the Carter Doctrine. Uh, that's right. To a large extent, not totally, because remember now, the United States have been meddling in the, in the Near East since 1948. United States help in Israel. What is the benefit to us? Um, oh, there is no benefit. <laughs> so you got all this money going to them. All this military equipment going to them, but then there's no benefit. What do we get out of it? A bunch of trouble. See, so it's, it's a one side. It's like France to the U.S. It's one sided. They get nothing but trouble. The United States supporting Israel, we get nothing but trouble. So uh, that's. But that. But he deepened it. He deepened it. He deepened it. Yes. He took a bad situation and made it worse. And then Reagan made it worse. And then Bush made it worse. And then Clinton made it worse. And then. Uh, George W. Bush made it much, much worse, and then Obama continued the badness. Trump tried to make the situation better to a large extent, but he was hated by the media for obvious that obviously that reason. And then Biden, maybe he's trying to get out also, and that is causing the media to hate him. Kevin Johnston, awesome! Thanks for the video. Video I just dropped in. What is your take on 9/11? I think it was very bad. H have you heard of the dancing Israelis? No, I don't think so, but I think I know what you're talking about. I know what you mean. They were Israeli art students caught at the, the Bork Towers across from the twin. Yeah, I knew nothing about that, you know. I know certain people are advised not to show up for work that day. Just poured in a wee left of broom. Cheers to you, Ronald, and cheers, chat. I think Left Brune, Left Brune is a great beer and we can't get it. I tried it one time. I bought it in Manhattan one time. Never saw it again. Yes, I was a teacher, Alexander Malley. I was a teacher from 1989 to 2012. Yeah, well, you know, I'd have to have some... Uh, source material and not just somebody saying well i watched the video or uh, this guy says it you know i mean real evidence but i mean I'm, i wouldn't be shocked aaron says the mysore kingdom of south india one of india local empire tipu sultan supported the american colonies also when cornwallis was sent to india you ever use period that's what i run on sentence aaron come on you got to use better grammar than that i can't follow this this is the sentence the mice I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but come on, you got to give me a break. The Mysore Kingdom of South India, one of India local empire, Tipu Sultan supported the American colonies. Also, when Cornwallis was sent to India, he made up for his loss in America. Okay, that's not a question. That's just a statement. Cheers, Ron. Cheers to you. People, I said this is question and answer. You ask the question, I'll get the answer. This is not just statement time. The media is bought and paid for in more ways than one. Ever heard of Operation Paperclip? CIA was involved in lots of problems. I've heard of it. I don't know anything about it. 
Do you follow Dave Smith or Michael Mouse? No, I never even heard of them. Go to Southeastern Louisiana for a vacation. Yeah, that's a good idea, but watch out for New Orleans. New Orleans has a, I call her a communist mayor. People say, a communist? You're saying the mayor of New Orleans is a communist? Well, I just call her that. <clears throat> I mean, she is though, but, um, and, they, and she's incompetent. So there's high crime, poor city services, un, unpaved streets in many cases, um, all kind of terrible restrictions for illnesses that she claims is a big threat and all this stuff. So like, um, she's sort of like an Idi Amin type person, you know, very unintelligent. Idi Amin was very, he was a, I think he was illiterate. And uh, she's sort of like that. I'm not saying she's illiterate, but she may as well be. And uh, she doesn't have a whole lot of sense. So, um, I mean, if you want to come to New Orleans, come up, come along. But I mean, what you gonna do there? What you gonna do in New York? <laughs> what you gonna do anywhere? I mean, anyway. Uh, Ronnie, I'd visit there for sure. Okay. Favorite president, Grover Cleveland. Um, who's my favorite president? That's a good question. Grover Cleveland, he would be in the top three or four for sure. Oh, I, I guess Grover Cleveland, Jefferson Davis, but Jefferson Davis was sort of, um, well, I can't criticize him because he was under a lot of pressure and he had a hard, hard time. He had a, a lot of things to deal with. So I might have been, people criticize him, you know, like he meddled and uh, he, he didn't get along with people and all. But yeah, he, he had a, okay, I, I'm going to give him, a, he was, yeah, okay, so I can't criticize him really. When your country's getting invaded and you're under a lot of stress and you're doing the best you can, I can't really say nothing bad about it. All right, so Grover Cleveland, Jefferson Davis, um, Um, uh, Franklin Pierce, maybe, uh, George Washington, <laughs> James Monroe, James, but the Monroe Doctrine is a problem, isn't it? Um, Madison was okay. Jefferson was okay. You know, they were all conservative. Jefferson, Madison, Monroe were conservative, but in some ways they violated their own principles. So it makes you wonder about them. But I mean, they were good, you know, better than the bad. They weren't bad. Grover Cleveland was very good. Wow. Careful there. That's a hot take. Uh, what do you mean a hot take? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm a big fan of Dave Smith and Michael Malice. They're great. I don't know about them, but I don't listen to any shows really except for beer reviews. You say beer reviews. Yeah, I mean, I listen to a lot of trivial stuff, honestly. I read a lot, but I don't listen to a lot. I can't keep, when I listen to things like I don't pay attention to it, I kind of, my mind wanders. Beer reviews, it'll wander off and on, but I can kind of, kind of follow the main idea of what they're saying. <laughs> There's an interesting video called Why Did India Not Get Genocided Like the American? Native Americans, you mean the, the original Americans. Do you agree that the reason was that the original Americans, because they didn't have a manufacturing economy? Well, it wasn't because they didn't have a manufacturing economy. They had no reading and writing and they had no, they weren't civilized. So they had no way to stop the British and the French and the Spanish from taking them over. They were very primitive, so they didn't know anything about immigration policy. So it's not like the Indians had, like, you know, Indians, tribes, immigrations bureau to, to make sure people didn't come into their country. So you have to keep in mind, they had no clue what was going on. You know, they were kind of like caught off guard. They didn't know how to deal. They could not deal with a situation they did not even understand. 
Plus, they were spending most of their time massacring and trying to exterminate each other and enslaving each other. They didn't like the, as they call them, the pale faces too much, but they, they hated each other's tribes much work more. So when the Spanish and French and English showed up with the with the muskets, not rifles, but muskets, they were delighted to get hold of those so they could uh, immediately attack other tribes. So um, of course, the manufacturing economy would have helped them, <laughs> but they uh, it was a sad situation, I suppose, uh, obviously. Does heroin come out of Afghanistan? Lots of it, yes. A lot of drug addiction in the United States. A lot of heroin coming out of Afghanistan. I don't know if it all comes here. I guess a lot goes to Europe. It's a lucrative place for uh, drug dealing. Is it true Dennis DeMess was abused as a child? <laughs> all right, Ronnie. He's talking about the actor in the movie. That's James Pimadano was talking about the... Um, Jay, if COVID was so deadly, why isn't the Taliban dying in ICUs with COVID and why don't they have mask mandates? I don't know. Maybe they've got herd immunity. I got a six pack of Leffy Brune small cans for seven pounds, but it's more established in a bottle, in my opinion. Yeah, I've never seen the cans of Leff. I hope it shows up in Louisiana again. Well, the Brune was never in Louisiana. Okay, I bought it in New York, in Manhattan, in New York City. <coughs> If it's been in Louisiana, I've never seen it. We get left, but we barely get left. I mean, nobody carries left anymore. European beers are like, I mean, we get a few European beers. 10 years ago, we got a lot, but they've been chased off the shelves by local craft beers. So, I mean, European beers are, are rare relative to what they were 10, 20 years ago. Used to, Every store used to sell left. Now, you got to look for it. You'd be lucky if you find it. Um, what is your stadium favorite stadium to visit in the Northeast? I'm gonna let that go as a geography question. I'm going to Camden Yards. Yeah, but Orioles Park is the actual name is the stadium is called Orioles Park at Camden Yards, but everybody calls it Camden Yards. But the name of the stadium is Orioles Park. You have been there before, right? Yes, I've been there like five times. Uh, maybe it was only four times. I could have gone there last month, but I didn't feel like it. I was right down the road, like 30 minutes away. If it was 30 minutes, I didn't have been 30 minutes away. But I was like, man, I'm tired. I'm going beer shopping. I should have gone to the game, really, because the hotel was no good. And then I was up, up all night with people making noise people from Oklahoma, apparently. Okay. Uh, but I, I didn't care about that game. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice. Very nice. Very nice stadium. Oh, my favorite stadium to visit in the Northeast. Um, um, let's see. The National Park is very nice in Washington, D.C. I know where to park for free. True story. I did it like three times. Didn't get killed. Um, I knew where to park for free at the Orioles Stadium, too, I might add, four times, and I didn't get killed. Um, I parked. I paid the first time I parked, and then I realized the other three times, wait, you can park for free right next to it. People didn't realize that. Um, Yankee Stadium is pretty good. I never parked there. That's, that's very difficult. Um, Shea Stadium is great. Not Shea Stadium. <laughs> the new stadium, City Field, whatever they call it this week. You know, they always have different sponsors. Fenway Park is, well, it's not really that nice, uh, uh, honestly. It's like an old, out-of-date stadium that's not really comfortable to sit in. But it's, it's historic, so it's more fun, you know what I mean? Pittsburgh is nice. Philadelphia is very nice. I know where to park for free there, too, by the way. Um No, I don't have a favorite. And Washington, D.C. is in the upper south. It's not in the north. So, no, I don't have a favorite. So is Baltimore. I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite. Are you ever tempted to go down government conspiracy theory rabbit holes like listening to Alex? Uh, no, not really. 
I have a friend that is, I have friends that are, but, but I don't really listen to all that stuff. I just uh, read a lot, but uh, yeah. What conspiracy theory do you believe in most? Um, I don't really believe in any of them. That Israeli comment, I agree, but you better be careful saying that. Well, I didn't say anything wrong. I just said I didn't agree with the U.S. government giving them money. I don't support foreign aid for any country. It's not just Israel. See, so I don't single them out. I'm not singling them out. I'm not saying, oh, well, that country in particular, the U.S. should not give money to. No, I'm saying the U.S. shouldn't give money to any country in general. None. No, no country, you see. Not any country on earth. Now, if they want to come buy weapons or whatever, that's their business. Cash and carry. I support cash and carry. But so, yeah, no, I mean, I'm not singling them out. I'm just talking about the Near East. What do you think of the Biden administration mandating all active duty military personnel to get the vaccine? I think it's a bad idea and I don't support it. But what do you expect from somebody who's bad and incompetent? Well, I expect bad policy and incompetent policies. Do I like Ron Paul? Yes, I went to hear him make a speech in Kenner, Louisiana in 2008. He was the first candidate I voted for. I thought he was a little far out. I didn't think he was far out, but he seemed to be the only anti-war candidate we have in a while. Yeah, I can't think of anything Ron Paul said that I disagree with. So I didn't think he was far out because I... Do I think native superstitions? I don't know any. I don't know if they're real or not. I don't think they're probably true. Just some some idea in their head. Like a lot of these primitive people have superstitions that don't have much much uh, truth to them. The Taliban doesn't need to introduce mask mandates as they already wear masks. Well, they don't wear masks. Or am I a Confederate sympathizer? Well, how can I sympathize with a Confederacy? They have been out of business since 1865. How can I sympathize with them? You know what I mean? It's not a current situation. It's like going back in time. You know, I, I can't go back in time. It'd be like asking me if I'm a, uh, you know, are you a sympathizer for uh, the uh, bourbon government of um, the kingdom of the two Sicilies? Well, I can't sympathize with the kingdom of the two Sicilies because I've been out of business since 1859. So I, it, that's a past event. So I can't sympathize with it. I can say, I can say things like, well, if I had been around at the time, what would I have done? Yeah, I could answer that question. Michael Malice is a published author. Okay, I just don't know who that is. I'm not saying I'm against him. I can't be against somebody I don't know anything about. What's the best beer you've had at a ballpark? Uh, I don't recall because I don't ever drink beer at ballparks because they're they're too expensive. And it would have been some, you know, normal beer that is unremarkable, like what I just drank. Um, sorry, I'm not trying to be flip. I just don't drink beer at ballparks. Do you? Do I think the Guardians will win the World Series? <laughs> the Guardians, the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, yay. That makes me feel so full of virtue when I say that. What is your take on critical race theory being taught in public schools? I understand if you don't want to touch the subject. Oh, I think it's a bad idea. But I know one thing. I would love to be in a discussion with somebody that uh, is a proponent of it because these people are comical to me. They, they're very pushy. They say, you need to have a discussion about this. And you people need to leave your comfort zone. Well, I always say, 
and you need to, what do they say? You need to get ready to experience discomfort. And I always tell them, I say, let me tell you something. I agree. We need to have a conversation about that subject. And I am all for it. But let me assure you of this. If we have that conversation, you are going to be the one leaving your comfort zone and you are going to be the one experiencing discomfort because I can assure you I will not. And secondly, I will not lose that debate. I will win. But you see what they'll do is they'll just they'll say we banned him. We didn't let him come on our show anymore. Well, why not? Well, we didn't like what he said. So when they say we need to have that conversation, what they mean is you need to join a conversation that we're going to moderate and control, and then you have to agree with everything we say. That's not a conversation. That's a that's a lecture. And these people are not going to lecture to me. But I'll join anybody out there on the internet that's doing those kind of topics that wants to have a real conversation that claims I need to be out of my comfort zone and get ready to experience discomfort. I am ready to go anytime. I mean, anytime that I have time but you will be the one experiencing discomfort, I can assure you. And then you'll probably start calling me names and everything, because that's all you can do. You can't d debate the topic, you see. So I know how these people operate, Kevin, and I'm not afraid of them. The sound of the train going by probably annoys you. No, it doesn't bother me at all. But I like the sound of it when watching, laughing out loud. No, I like the train, I like trains. I'm pro train. Best stadium in the Northeast is City Field, and it's always been called City Field since opening in 2009. <clears throat> I don't know if it's the best, but I like it. I've been there th uh, three times, four times. Don't worry about the government. Okay, Nina, I won't worry about the government. To Nuts to Israel. Well, I like, I like Israel. See, some people take me the wrong way. I like Israel. I'm pro-Israel. I'm pro-every country, you know? So people get confused in their mind, you see. They'll say, oh, you got some gripe against Israel. I don't, I don't, I don't have any gripe against Israel whatsoever. No, you're wrong. I just wouldn't have given them a single penny since 1948. I know that much. I said, and I wouldn't be in an alliance with them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But I like them. They're nice. I'd, I'd go there on a trip, of course. Sad situation in Afghanistan. Sad to see. Shame it couldn't be helped. I know it's a terrible thing. And I said it 20 years ago it was going to end up like this. Dodgers game was wild. Oh, and Blake Snell did a good job, finally. Now people are going off, going off on. This is question and answer, not just general topic conversation. Did you have a choice as a kid with vaccines in public school? No, they gave everybody. Yeah, they just gave everybody a vaccine at the doctor's office. Nobody questioned that. Of course, those vaccines have been around for decades, not months, you know. Yeah, there was a little bit more testing involved with those. You know, you didn't have this very suspicious and unusual constant harping from the government. You know, they didn't have this kind of hysterical approach. It's safe. Don't you know it's safe? Just do it. Just do it. Don't question it. Just do it. You want people to die? You know, they didn't have that approach. So, so we, see, when you take that approach, that kind of hysterical approach, it makes people think, I, I don't know if it's that safe. You're acting funny. Like, why are you acting funny like that? You know, you, you're talking about this wonderful thing I should do, but you're acting very strange about it. Like, you're making me not trust you, you know. If it was so wonderful, you wouldn't have to act crazy. So that makes people very defensive. Like, wait a minute. You, you, something up your sleeve. There's something weird about you. You know, these wild eyed people that talk crazy. And I was at work yesterday and this woman who I don't consider particularly bright. Uh, but she uh, and then she'll admit she never watches the news. So she's ignorant. I don't mean she's stupid. Necessarily, but she's not well informed at all. So she uh, was saying Oh, I can't believe these people don't want to get it. They just, they don't, they're going around murdering people by not getting it. And I was thinking, boy, this woman is really not a smart person. And I was thinking she ain't going to bring it up with me because 
she'll probably leave this place of employment in tears if she tangles with me. And I was just looking over there thinking, you might not want to make that mistake. But she didn't because she knows better. I just kept quiet, kept on working. I was thinking, you know who to talk to, the people that's going to just go, oh, yeah, right, 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 you right. She ain't going to talk to me because I ain't going to back down. And she's going to get well instructed. I joked last time about how without vaccines in the World Health Organization guidelines, the Taliban would all be sick and easy to defeat. Nobody seems to believe that. Yeah, that's a good point. They don't follow any guidelines. How could they win this war? They should all be sick and in uh, on, on ventilators. Makes you wonder, don't it? Imagine if there was a draft. I imagine it would be bad. Hey, Nina. Yeah. DBR, they're saying hello to each other. Yeah, government schools are a problem. Okay. Uh, it's not about blaming anyone. Oh, yeah. Is that so, Aaron? I think you're wrong. Okay. Which city have you enjoyed more in your experiences? Kansas City or St. Louis? Kansas, uh, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, easily St. Louis. Kansas City was kind of boring, but it was fine. I went to two games there. I'm good. I wish I was sipping PBRs in the patio right now. Okay. I'm sipping water. Yeah. Driven by City Field more times than Fenway, probably because it's on a highway. Nice ballpark. Right. It's on that Roosevelt freeway. Like It's like a freeway. I walked on it. Like There's like a side, like literally there's a sidewalk. I parked by the uh, botanical gardens and I just walked to Chinatown and I walked on that highway um, sidewalk, like literally a sidewalk and I walked to the stadium. I parked for free. Yeah, no problem. It was a nice walk. No problem. No problem. How are you and David meet? He's a great part of your channel. Already. Oh, just uh, beer reviews and, you know, Facebook. He was in a uh, one of those groups and uh, he was saying, oh yeah, I would like to go to Matherns or whatever and buy stuff. And I said, oh yeah, I live close to it and, and, and whatnot. And so then we um, we met up over there and then we started trade, not trading beer, but say, oh, let's try this beer. Let's try that beer. And uh, We're both Catholic and like to go to different churches. Me more than him. He's not really into that going to different churches, but he's done it. He's enjoyed it, but uh, we like to go to mass together. And his uh, friend, Apparently likes to go. I've never been to mass with her. My friend, she likes to go to mass every Sunday. And we've gone together. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have a whole lot in common aside from beer, liquor, and whiskey, because that's the only thing you drink. Beer, whiskey, and going to church. <laughs> that's about it. He's not too much into sports. I said, why do you go to games? Like, you want to go on a trip to Houston to go see the Astros. You don't watch sports. He said, well, it's fun to go on a trip. You know, it's fun to go on a trip. I said, okay. Dave Smith is strongly considering running for president on the Libertarian ticket in 2024. I know you don't like the Libertarian Party, but he's part of the Mises, Mises Caucus, Ron Paul Wayne. I'm not against the Libertarian Party at all. I'm against many Libertarians who don't understand federalism and have a Marxist approach to a lot of things, I've noticed. So I'm not against that freedom approach at all. You're not asking questions. You're just making statements, Aaron. The whole point of critical race theory is to understand the legacy of racism that was established during imperialism, colonialism, and how it still exists in our system in the West. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We know all about that, okay? We get it. We know. We've been hearing it our whole lives, okay? We don't need to be taught it because we know about it. It goes on and on and on. So you didn't ask a question. You're just making statements. So somebody shoots somebody in the head on the sidewalk eating dinner in Miami, and they say, well, you see... That's the legacy of what happened in 1840, and he's not really truly to blame because, you know, even though he was high on mushrooms, you know, it's like, okay, no, he's to blame because he has free will, so he's not just an animal person that can't think. I've had my vaccine twice, no problems at all. It protects me, you know, so cool. That's great, Jordy. I'm so glad. Hope you don't have any terrible side effects that kill you young, but uh, you might not, and there may not be any bad side effects. May be a wonderful thing with no side effects, and I hope so. And if there are terrible side effects, all the people that have been bothering me and badgering me for the last year, 
if they cat if they develop some horrible side effects, I'm gonna feel sorry for them, but I'm probably gonna tell them, well, I was the I was the uh, trouble. What, what am I gonna tell them? Well, I was the problem, but it looks like now you got the problem. Should President resi Biden resign or be impeached? Well, he should resign because he has bad policies, and then. Kamala Harris should resign because she has bad policies and then they should appoint me president because I have good policies. Yes. All presidents with bad policies should resign. <laughs> Do you believe that COVID was made in a lab? I don't know. I believe it's possible. Do you think Biden will be our president through the first full term? He says he's the president. Uh, maybe he might make it. Get reelected. Oh, no. He probably not going to run again. Trump isn't. Okay, you're just making statements. I said it's a question. This is a question show, not a let me make my statements. Here's a question. See a question. Why doesn't the media push getting into shape and eating healthy? Um, I don't know, because the media is made up of a bunch of pompous, know-it-all, sanctimonious, irritating, you know, self-righteous twits. And have a great immune system, you'll have better odds of fighting a, a virus. Yeah, I know that, but they, they're not, they're bought people, they're part of the establishment. The media is always part of the establishment. So, whatever they're hooked up, juiced in, people say they're going to go along with it. Look at the advertisements on Fox News. It's all about every kind of medicine you ever heard of. Can you get a booster if you haven't had the first two jabs yet? I don't know. <laughs> Harris got sick out to get into that's why she couldn't fly back from Singapore. I heard that. I heard that. That was in the paper today and not some right wing conspiracy paper, just a regular slime picayune. I mean, the Times picayune. <coughs> I'm late. We talking about Alamo and Cabo. Yeah, not much. Do you believe critical race theory is anti white rhetoric? Seems that way. What are your thoughts on other channels copying topics about beers you have already done? Uh, I don't care. I noticed that they steal it. They kind of steal my material, but I don't care because I do the same thing. Do you think a parliamentary system of the United Kingdom is better than the American government system? No, it's no, neither better nor worse. It's, it's not better or worse. It's just like the same because if you got bad leaders, it doesn't matter what kind of system. So it's neither better nor worse. Our system is fine, but we have bad leadership, see? You know, if, if you got a nice car and you use inferior gasoline, you're going to get bad results. So we have a nice governmental system, but we got bad leaderships forever, so we get bad results. England and Canada, it's the same thing. They got a parliamentary system, but they got bad leadership, so they get bad results. The Great Reset. I've heard about it. Well, they've been trying to do that since the Tower of Babel, Tower of Babel. So, ain't no surprise. I mean, that's how these people operate. You know, they've been trying to do that since July 14th, 1789. You know, they want to create like that girl uh, from the Go Go said, "Heaven on Earth." Would she say, "Heaven is a place on Earth"? But that's what they act. That's just a song. But they actually believe it. They're going to create heaven on earth. Singapore trip was delayed by someone else, not the vice president. Okay, well, it doesn't mean that it wasn't for that reason. Uh, it is very suspicious to me that it was approved quite quickly. And somebody was saying this morning on Lou Rockwell, was it actually approved? There's some question about that. They said, I didn't read the articles. Stick to beer. Your politics are pure garbage. Oh, yeah? You should come on this channel. I'll put a link and tell me why. Because if you're just going to make statements like that, that doesn't that doesn't support your uh, your contention very well to call people's ideas garbage. Maybe your, your ideas are probably garbage. That's why you're saying that, because you're projecting your inadequacies on me. Don't do that. I, I'm, don't use projection. That's not a good way to argue to accuse people of being what you are. Don't do that. That's not good. Sigmund Freud taught about that. CRT teaches that America is evil and we should all feel terribly guilty about it. And 
give any power or wealth we have to minority groups to make up for it. Yeah, I I I I think that's probably true. And um, but people are woke. They're woke about that. You know, did I hear about Russia signing military agreements with Saudi Arabia, and Nigeria? No, I didn't. Top five beers of the year so far. I never make lists. I can never, I can never figure that out. I don't do top lists. Sorry, people ask me all the time. Do lists. How do I think Trump did as president? Not his rhetoric or his, po but his policies. Um, uh, C minus, low average. But compared to all the Fs, it's not bad. Compared to the Fs, I'm not saying he was good. I'm saying compared to all the abject failures, it's a, it was a different, it was a nice change of pace, you know. And we've had a lot of Fs, you know, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman, you know, John F. Kennedy. You can name a lot. Lyndon Johnson. You can name a lot of Fs, you know. Uh, don't worry about that, Lloyd. A lot of people do those kind of things. They watch political videos and they got nothing to present. So they just say, your ideas are garbage. You know, uh, you're stupid and stuff like that. Well, that's that actually helps my arguments because that's all they can say. And I put a link so they could join for 30 minutes and state their case uninterrupted, but you know, they're not gonna do that. Speaking of gasoline, do you think there will be a point in the next 50 years where gasoline will not be widely available with electric vehicles becoming more mainstream? Yes, probably. I would prefer a free enterprise approach. Right, Belinda Carlisle. I couldn't remember her name, Belinda Carlisle. The Demo yeah. Well, I think Afghanistan was bound to happen that way, more or less, anyway, no matter who was running the show. Yeah, the Mexican border is a real serious problem. Oh, yeah, the mumps. <laughs> okay. Does anybody really value what the FDA says? I think people do because they trust what the lying media says, you know, but uh, they have a history of uh, saying ridiculous things that they have to retract later. I was reading an article from National Public Radio from 2017 NPR, and they were saying one third of all drugs approved by the FDA turn out to be dangerous and have to be withdrawn later on. One third of all drugs approved by the FDA are withdrawn later due to side effects and danger. That's National Public Radio, not exactly a right-wing outfit. I was watching a video, I watched the whole video from 60 Minutes saying how people were like almost forced, but not forced, but harassed to take the swine flu vaccine in 1976. And then they had all these terrible side effects, like this woman who was totally healthy, totally healthy. And they, her husband was like, you really should take the swine flu vaccine because everybody says it's safe. And the FDA approved it as being safe and effective. So she took the vaccine and she was crippled after that and couldn't smile correctly and all. And she said she had to wear leg braces for life, she thought probably. And that was 60 minutes. Not exactly a right wing, uh, you know, outfit. So, um, I'm quoting NPR and CBS, 60 Minutes. See, um, do I think America should adopt universal health care? America spends more money on health care than most countries that has universal health care. Absolutely not. I believe in free enterprise. I would not support socialist medicine in any under any circumstances. I don't even support Medicare and Medicaid. That's not the role of the U.S. government. In fact, there's nothing in the Constitution that authorizes the United States government to provide Medicare and Medicaid. It's not in the Constitution, so that's illegal anyway. And I've asked people, can you show me where the U.S. government is authorized to do that? And they'll scream and holler and call me names. But I say, you, you can call me names, but you've not cited where they are given the delegated authority to do that. Of course, they can't. Do I think racism is worse now or worse in the 60s? It's probably not worse now. 
it's just being promoted by different people. People that claim they're fighting racism usually are the most racist ones I've noticed. They, they hate other, like literally hate other races. And they'll tell you that to your face, that they hate other races and they will claim that they're fighting racism, which is sort of a oxymoronic viewpoint on life. Yeah, it's sad about Afghanistan. Yeah, right. Why make everybody take something that's ineffective, right? You better get this. Even though it doesn't work, you need to get it. They were saying that on uh, Channel 4 News, WWL, about 10 years ago, there was a big special story about how everybody needs to take, you need to take the flu vaccine. And I remember the famous quote, although the vaccine is only 20% effective, you need to take it. I told my father, I said, well, WWL admitted that it was only 20% effective. That means 80% of the time it doesn't work. And he told me, well, I still think you need to get it. This is my father. I said, oh, OK. Uh, no, no, thanks. MSM, a mainstream media. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Do I ever trace my Acadian lineage? I have had other people in our family done that. Yes, they traced it. I have the books. And it's pretty interesting. They go back to France. I think along the German border, Alsace-Lorraine uh, sort of area, Franco-German. Don't play with fire. That's what I think when I hear people say they're getting the, the you know what. Yeah, I'm going to let them play with fire. Would you let someone join and state their cause if they were wearing a mask? No, I would not. They have to use their real name and their real face. Trump said on Fox Business last week that Pfizer owns the FDA. I don't know if they own it, but they heavily influence it, obviously. You know, well, I mean, obviously, he didn't mean that literally. Huh. Yeah. Jesse Jackson took it. Him and his wife had the, the jab, and now they're both in the hospital and the ICU. But people are saying, yeah, but that's the people that didn't get it causing that. Yeah. If you're that weak minded, do you think they will ban cigarettes in our lifetime? Well, they might ban cigarettes, but the the free market will overcome that. You see, they ban drugs, they ban heroin, but I, I heard that people still can get heroin. They banned alcohol one time, but I think people still got it, you know? The, the hidden hand always wins, you know? Healthcare costs are being used to keep people from affording houses and cars and upward financial mobility, yeah? Oh yeah, that's not a question. Do, you, do I think DeSantis and Trump will run together in 2024? That's a good idea. Or do you think DeSantis goes for president and Trump runs from, for senator from Florida? I don't know. Does Trump have the patience to be a senator? He, he should run. I don't know why these presidents are so stuck up. You know, they're so full of themselves. Okay, you used to be the president. Now you can get another job. Run for Congress. Run for Senate. You know, be in the House of Representatives. Uh, John Quincy Adams was in the House of Representatives for decades after being president. Uh, William Howard Taft was Chief Justice of the Supreme Court for 10 years after being president. But these people think they're too good for running for office. Uh, like it's below them, but it's not beneath them. And so, yeah, I think Trump, that'd be a good idea, uh, Ronnie. Do I believe our society would function better if social media never existed? No. Colors hate each other until the aliens show up and take over. Okay. Oh, boy. Does it seem like these modern Marxists are more racist and supportive of a covert version of segregation? Oh, yes. They're very racist. Uh, they like to stir up racial animosity. Um, they're openly racist, pretty much. You can tell that they scream and holler about, well, they make racist statements constantly. So they uh, they obviously hate, uh, pe they hate other races. But a lot of these Marxists, are, um, they know what they're doing. In the 60s, there was more racism from the majority, and nowadays there's more racism from the minorities. Well, maybe. You think people that get back should be the spreaders, could be the spreaders? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Good afternoon, Ronald. I'm about to get off of this, y'all. Do What do you think about colleges nowadays? Do you think left-leaning ideologies are being spread in most U.S. colleges? Yes, I think colleges spread communism. But I noticed that in 1986, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, when I was in college. But I was inoculated against that because I had read a lot as a 
young person. So I would go to class and they would have these Marxist Leninist professors spouting all that stuff like they do now. But I would just be listening, you know, and I'd be thinking, oh, there's a, okay, I know what he is, or I know what she is. But I was educated on my own. I educated myself by reading, you see. So uh, all the other students would be like, maybe not that impressed because they're probably just trying to get a credit and get out like people today. But some were wide eyed and, and, and like a sponge absorbing all that Marxist rhetoric. But I would just be sitting there listening, I always sit to the front, I always sit at the very front. I'd always sit on the front row and just be looking at them. And I always made A's because I never would argue with them. I wouldn't argue with them. And I would never validate anything they said. I would just say, well, this book says this. You know, I would never agree with them. And I always made A's. They couldn't do anything to me. All right. Well, that's it, y'all. Uh, no, I've never read that book. I know that, Aaron. Did I say they were scientists? I don't believe I did. What do I think? Of, oh, yeah. The, so colleges are, you can go to college and learn a lot of good stuff. And you can just ignore all these Marxists. That's all I did. I just ignored their foolishness. You know, I went there and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they would go on and on, you know, but I didn't care. I just would say, okay, whatever. You know, I'll give them the answers and I make an A, you know, so. I never read that book. Uh, division is the only strategy of, by every fringe group while we fight, they collect the spoils. Yeah, that's true. Aaron, there are many doctors. Yeah. Well, Aaron's very definitive in what he says. What's wrong with being a leftist or a progressive? Nothing except that all your ideology is incorrect. It's like everything you believe is not correct. That's the only problem with it. Thank you, Ron. I enjoy these types of streams. Me too. Thank you, enjoy the decline. Do I think they should allow the shift in baseball? Yes. Politics. Did they already get rid of the bulk rule? I'll just stick to beer. Well, that's a good idea too. You know, whatever. I like politics, you know, and I, I don't feel uncomfortable talking about politics, religion, geography, history. So I'm comfortable with it. But a lot of people in the beer world, they jumpy about it. You know, they're very jumpy about it. So they, they won't, and they might have a certain ideology, so they get real wound up, you know. They'll come to me and say, oh, I love your channel. You do great beer reviews. And I'm like, well, thank you. And they want to hang out. And they want to do beer. Oh, I'm from England. Let's uh, hang out and do beer group reviews and all. And I'll say, okay. And then, but then later they'll say, oh, I don't want to hang out with you because you disagree with me on politics. And I'm like, what kind of person thinks like that? You know, I don't I don't think that's a health, a mentally healthy way of dealing with other people. Like you can only hang out with people that agree with you on everything. Like that's sort of a sick outlook on life, I think. I don't deal, I, I don't think along those lines. The only reason I started hanging out with all these beer people is because what? We had a, a contact point, which was, we liked talking about beer brands and oh, this one is too malty, this one's too bitter and so forth. Not because I agree with them on all their political and social ide ideology, but if they disagree with me, I, I didn't care. It didn't make any difference to me. Okay. That was fun, Ron. A really interesting dialogue between you and the chat. Hopefully you do these more often. I will enjoy that. I'll try, but it's hard to schedule these because things are always coming up. The best thing about a rightist is that they aren't a leftist, right? Plus their ideology is correct. Literally, I can come on the air and say no, but I can show you why my ideas are correct. And I don't have to call you names. I don't have to uh, say bad things about you. I don't have to talk bad about you. See, that's why I know I'm winning. I know I'm winning because I don't have to say bad things about people that disagree with me. I can just very carefully and, and clearly state the case. I'm from Ireland. Trust me, the North has politics. Oh, yes. I'm very aware, Danny. I totally agree. Great talk, Ronald. Thank you, Daryl. Totally agree, mate. I really do never seem to be able to discuss politics without a fight breaking out, so I tend to avoid it. I don't usually bring it up. Like, I'll just won't say anything, but I might lay, like put little bombs out there, you know, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Like little clues, What you know what I mean? Like little pinpricks just to see where people are going. 
But if they if they seem like they're getting hostile, I just drop it, you know, like, oh, well, whatever, you know. But if they want to press the issue, I'm not going to back down, you know. I'll never back down. But I won't, like, instigate it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. I won't instigate it. Um, but some of the people got angry because, but they won't tell me to my face. Like, they go behind the back, behind my back. Oh, you know, do you know what he said? Oh, 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 dear. That's terrible. I'm from England. We don't believe that over here. And I was like, what? And then I, I had people coming back to me telling me, you know, they were talking about you. And I say, what? And then I confronted some of them, like, why are you saying these things? You, to my face, you're all chubby, you know, like all chummy, like, oh, hey, mate. Like they like to say that, hey, mate. But then behind my back, you're saying these terrible things, you know? And they, the guy was like, oh, uh, well, uh, you see, I was like, no, you got caught. That's why you, you, you're stammering because you didn't think, you didn't think one of the people at the bar hanging out drinking when you was going to report back to me. But they do report back to me and they tell me things. I was a leftist when I was younger, then I became more open-minded. Well, that's good. I agree with Jay that there's nothing wrong with having a different opinion about politics without killing each other. See, Aaron, I'm trying to help Aaron become what I am. <laughs> but uh, we argue about that, but we, we still talk about beer without being like hostile and insane. I'm an Irish Republican. I feel you. Oh, okay. I'm neutral in that. I have no, I don't take sides in that because it has no bearing on me. I have no involvement in that whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Like, makes no difference to me. I'm, I'm not involved in the internal affairs of Northern Ireland. Okay. Now, if I live there, different story. If I was a citizen, okay, I guess I'd have to take a side, but I don't live there. So I don't take a side. All right. Thanks everybody. I'm going to go see what they're talking about on the radio show. Y'all take care now.